think we've produced as a management team quite a spectacular set of results for our shareholders. We've seen turnover grow by nearly 10 million to 30 million pounds in that period. And that growth's come in two areas. We've delivered an organic growth from the existing assets of the business of around about three million pounds. And the balance has come from utilizing the resources of the assets we bought from Broadock Toiletries back in February 2016. That has meant that we've been able to deliver on the bottom line a growth of operating profit to 1.5 million pounds for our shareholders. And this has been generated through tight control of overheads as well as the synergistic benefits of adding the turnover on from a new site and utilizing central resources. This means that the shares at the end of the day have given a 4.1% return to our shareholders. The other big benefit we've had in this period is we've generated £1.2 million worth of cash. It means we feel confident that we can propose a dividend to our shareholders for the first time ever, but it also gives us the ability to take advantage of opportunities as they arrive and to support the organic or potential acquisitions growth of the business moving forward. Crichtons are a growing health and beauty business that have their products in over 15,000 retailer doors in the UK and globally. We are a business that design, produce, develop and manufacture a range of products in that category into the value, mass and premium sectors of retail. Um, we're also a business that understands and focuses on the consumer. We focus on what the consumer needs, on consumer trends, and therefore put products into the market that are going to meet those needs and those desires that the consumer has. We also monitor very closely EPOS sales that come out of our retailers to understand what's selling and what's not selling so that we can react very quickly to either discontinuing product or doing more of the product that the consumers are wanting to buy. We are a solution provider ultimately insofar as that we have different types of customers from direct to retail with our own brands to customers where we manufacture their brands and where we develop and manage retailer brands. So therefore we define ourselves as a solution provider as someone who can design if needed, we can do consumer research, we can just develop formulations or we can manufacture. So we have a very diverse set of skills in the business and capabilities in order to be flexible and agile in the health and beauty category. We operate within a number of markets, but also within a number of channels of service. So number one, we own our own brands and we take those two ret retailers direct and to UK and global markets direct. Number two, we have recently started licensing brands. So that's where we are managing brands as a licensor um, on behalf of a brand owner. We also manage a private label business, which is where we develop and manufacture direct for retailers own brands. And then we contract manufacture for other brands. So that multi-level approach to how we get product to market has enabled us to get that market presence. We also um, have expanded our export markets. So that has enabled us to go to different types of retailers and different types of markets and different positions, which has increased those number doors that we do globally. Fundamentally, one of the reasons we get that market presence is because we add value and provide a value product to the market. So whether it's in the value sector, the mass sector or the premium sector, we develop and deliver a quality product, whether that's for ourselves, for those licensed brands, for those retailers or for those brand owners. And that has helped us increase that market presence. One of our USPs is that we have a very diverse customer base, multiple products and multiple markets. So in terms of customers, we supply Poundland to Harrods and everything in between. So it's a very diverse set of customers that we supply. In terms of products, we supply everything from baby care to premium fine fragrance. And again, everything in between. So that could be hair care, bath and body care, skin care. We are now also producing candles and home fragrance, which marry up quite nicely with the personal care market. We are also now in multiple global markets that could be anywhere from the UK to Latin America, to more recently the Middle East and Central Europe. So the breadth and depth of our business is quite significant in terms of what we supply, who we supply it to and where we supply it. The reason we 
promote this in our business is we believe it gives us a robustness and a resilience in terms of being able to respond to opportunity and more importantly, understand the consumer globally and understand markets. Ultimately, that means we innovate product and we bring product to the market that hopefully is going to be successful, not just in the UK, but in multiple markets. The factor that makes Crichton successful is its people. The strength and depth of the team that we have allows us to be agile, flexible, and diversify. We spend a lot of time training our team and picking the right people to develop throughout the business. This includes a very successful graduate scheme where we bring in all sorts of talent throughout the business, whether that be in marketing, sales, engineering, purchasing, and we bring them up through the business. We like to say we grow our own, which can be very successful. Um, and many of those graduates that have come through the business are now performing key functions within the business. In addition to that, we look for people that are able to adapt to change, are able to take advantage of opportunity and really enjoy a challenge. Not only is this positive for our business, but it's also very positive for our customers. And if we can have the type of people that are advancing our customers in terms of the value that we add, then that ultimately is going to advance our business. One of the big challenges was to keep control of the core disciplines of the business. And I think we've demonstrated that since we acquired the business out of the Broad Oak acquisition, because we have delivered on improvements in working capital and other aspects of the business in that period, whilst integrating and expanding and taking on over 100 new staff. So we've been successful there, but that's a key aspect we've got to continue to do going forward. As we've expanded people, we need to continue to manage and develop those people in order that they can grow and contribute to the business going forward. So again, we need to continue our very good graduate development and other training programmes so that we can recruit, develop people to meet the needs of the business as it expands. The big challenge facing us now as we've expanded is how do we maximise the assets we've bought and make sure we generate that and cope with the expansion. So we're now going into a position where we're having to flesh out and build on our manufacturing capability in order to meet the growing demand that is coming our way. And that will entail looking at targeted investment to automate where possible and take labour costs out. Because again, we see a big challenge coming forward as the market um, becomes tighter for labour in the, over the coming year. We, we have a key focus to control our margins and make sure that we deliver a good profitable business. We are not a company that is going to compromise on that. We need to make sure that we're delivering a product and a profitable product that will deliver shareholder value. We'll continue to control our costs and overheads as we've demonstrated since we acquired the Broad Oak acquisition where we kept assets under control and we've made a, a, a significant contribution to terms of synergy and that has helped generate the additional profit that we've delivered in the period. We've been very successful in generating additional cash through the growth in the business. We have a lot of opportunities available to us, both to meet our organic growth, which will be through investing in new products, developing new ranges, getting those out of the market, looking at growth across different export markets, and looking at different opportunities within different sectors within the UK. We also have um, increased capability following the acquisition of the broad oak assets, but we also need to target those and look at ways to manage and grow and increase our capacity and capability to meet the demand that we see coming along through the business. Um, we also have a, a very active new product development regime and we will need to invest and develop those products, invest resources and capability to develop those products to expand into overseas markets if that's necessary, wherever the opportunity takes us really. Finally, we've got the opportunity and the resources and the capability again demonstrated with the Broad Hawk and how we've integrated that business to bolt on significant bits of business. So there may be opportunities out there that we now have the capability to take advantage of very quickly that will significantly grow the business drive the bottom line and add shareholder value. We have quite ambitious aspirations over the next three years. We're looking to achieve a turnover of £60 million, so double it from the existing turnover. Some of that will be delivered by organic growth, 
but we feel as though we've got the resources available now to take us to the next stage and look at other acquisitions, whether they be brands that we can bolt onto our existing capability or expansion in manufacturing to drive growth opportunities more quickly than we would achieve through organic growth. We also want to achieve a net margin of 5% for our shareholders. And that will drive us from the 4.1% we have now. So again, a turnover of £60 million, delivering a 5% margin on the bottom line. We then have an aspiration to pay to our shareholders a dividend yield of around about 2.5% on a consistent basis. We'll start cautiously, but we'll work towards that figure over the three-year period.